Hello, and welcome to episode 46 of the QDR Crusaders for May 14th, 2013. Today is the tired episode of the podcast because it's very late on a Saturday afternoon. So we do mm, apologize yeah. if we sound a bit down, but we're going to try to pump it up just for you guys. So my name is Rainbow Plasma. I'm the organizer and editor of the podcast, and today I'm joined by... Burned a one the special guest coordinator and also the editor for the podcast. I'm FutterGuy317, and I'm the art coordinator for the podcast. I think it actually, and I do the questions. I also need a coffee. We're good. Did you? <laughs> we all need coffee. <laughs> for the record, did you actually pick up the questions this week, Pinky Dash? Or no, I'm doing it now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, you'll do that while we record the episode. I just, yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure that everything was going, uh, you know, the same. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, we're a little bit tired because we're recording this late um, for a multiple of reasons. The, yeah. the main reason was because our special guest, who we're still not going to name... Um, couldn't make it yesterday. <laughs> no, he, just, he couldn't make it yesterday. Yeah, though, he couldn't make it. It was unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. So, um, unfortunately, we couldn't do that, even though we said last week, but that kind of stuff happens, you know. Um, we, we plan stuff, and then it doesn't happen the last minute, so we have to, you know, get this out on time for you guys, so... Instead, we're just going to be doing a normal episode um, this week. Uh, Burned, you're also somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am at EQLA. I'm at Equestria LA here at Los Angeles. Well, technically this is Anaheim, but close enough. Yeah. And, um, yes. <laughs> th- that was a complete surprise for us because you, you, like, you texted us. You're like, hey, guys, I'm going on a road trip. And we like didn't think anything of it, and then <laughs> next thing we know, you're at EQLA and and like texting I, us like, "Hey, I just finished having a beer with a fan" or something like that. It's like <laughs> I what? literally <laughs> decided to come to the convention like two days before, and I was like, you know what? I have the resources. I don't have to work Sunday. Forget it. I'm just like just drove here for sixteen hours. Technically nine here, slapped to the nine one, but whatever. Like That's- I I made it here. It was kind of an adventure, and it's been fun. It's been worth it. I've had great fun here i've met two fans um had a beer with one of them and i've got so much information from, like the artist alley like people recognize me someone took my picture um, <laughs> that's like, awesome and i got to sign stuff it was crazy it was good times shout out to um mummified mummified mustangs by the way he says hi to you all oh hi <laughs> Hi. Yeah, it was awesome. Awesome to get to meet him. He was a cool guy. He's a fan um, who bought me a drink. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. That's super awesome. So you said that you drove nine hours and then slept in the nine hours. Did you just like go into one of those random creepy motels like halfway? <laughs> no, no creepy <laughs> motels. I actually stayed with a good friend of mine uh, to Delta. Uh, he uh, offered me a place to stay, which was really cool. I appreciate that. Okay. If he's listening to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's a good brony friend of mine. Um, we play league with them all the time. Yeah. Oh, and I got to meet Lake Customer too. Forget if I mentioned that. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And it was awesome because he was like fanning out over it, <laughs> which is really <laughs> cool. Um, hopefully, yeah, I'm hoping I can get in contact with him and like maybe have a drink with him later or something. But, uh, that's so awesome. Hopefully, the artist room isn't closed after this. Yeah. Yeah. Can I so just say was... I'm like super jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten so Me much too. stuff. Mm. Yeah, like you didn't you didn't give us enough time to like let the jealousy come out of us because usually with these kind of events like you you hear about it and you're like, "Oh man, that really sucks that I can't go." And you you spend about a week being jealous and then after that you're like, "Ah, don't be stupid." Blah blah blah. blah. You didn't give us that week, so now I'm just sitting here being like, "Man, I hate burnt." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It sucks. <laughs> I can buy you something if you want. I'll buy you already, only stuff. You already did. Did I? What the love. Luna poster? Oh yeah, that. <laughs> that was twenty bucks. I mean, three. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we do art sometimes. Um, sometimes, probably. Sometimes. I mean, yeah, occasionally we do time. art. So, I mean, should we? Yeah, we, I guess we should. Maybe. Um, yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, we couldn't have our guest this week. Um, so we decided to pull a theme out, which uh, for this week is armor. Not right. not the shining variety, but you know, it's spelt just... with a U because I'm editing. So shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. You mean you spelled uh, the proper ha- way? Half half of the podcast spells it the proper way. So take that as you will. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Um. So, so armor, armor. That we, yeah. Armor part of the benefit of us pre- preparing a little bit better than we usually do, um, is the fact that we actually had this ready to go. 
just in case he didn't come. So because the guest didn't work out, bam, we're actually organized. So this isn't just something that we pulled out of our butts. We actually had this planned. If if we had a guest this week, this would have been next week. But we'll just yeah, shift we'll, things around. Because last week we also weren't sure, you know, whether or not it would be a theme or a guest. So we kind of came up with this before or yeah, actually before we started recording last week. Look at how organized we are. Yeah, we're so cool. <laughs> All right. Um, Yay us. <laughs> moving on. Uh, so this is our first piece. It's called Jousting by Mewball, who is a fantastic artist. We've featured some of their art before. We have. Yes. There? There? Is it her? Her? Can, her? Is it mm-hmm. burned? I'm calling upon you to guess the gender. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I swear I wasn't texting. Um, <laughs> I believe I believe Mew Balls are her. Okay. I think because it doesn't say on the DeviantArt. Um, no, but, it doesn't. Uh, I thought I saw something on the um. We could say the artist Tumblr. Yeah. Um, okay. I well, uh, it's not uh, a big on deal. that and the the pony OC that uh, pursueth a she that she has on her um, DeviantArt is a female uh pony well that so doesn't tell you that anything doesn't, that's her ceiling like, that doesn't tell I'm you thinking, anything I'm assuming... yeah, it, does. It, it totally means something oh shut up <laughs> <laughs> i think the interesting thing about this piece is that um i wouldn't have recognized it as a mewball piece just by the style alone because my um i guess my preconception of mewball style was a little bit different than this ended up coming out which was really interesting to me um so yeah yeah no, I can, I can, yeah i mean I can it's see that. It's still got the the gritty feel that you would normally see in a Mewall piece, um, but yeah, it's it's kind of different from what I would expect. Um, I think Mewball does like a bunch of different stuff. That's the thing. Like mm-hmm. it's got a general feel to it, but there is like a difference in style, even like anatomy as that as a lot of different things. Tribe. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about this piece? is uh the way well <laughs> jumping right into armor just the way that it's depicted um cuz normally if you think about armor it's like shiny and stuff and, and here i think it's kind of dull actually the way that the armor is depicted yeah i kind of get a yeah. shiny vibe from it i think how it's painted might give um an, a sort of dull feel how it transitions from light to dark cuz like normally when we think of something that's highlighted um, yeah. we think of like that really sharp you know mirror could um, be. kind of mirror effect when like you have like a clear shiny ball um mm-hmm. and um how something things will warp around it and it kind of creates that line of like highlight highlight line on it um when things are warped um but i sort of get a shiny ish feel um just because of how white the armor is on top of fluttershy and on top of rainbow dash yeah. it's not silver like if it was dull it would still kind of have that silver tint mm-hmm. so i think it's just how um she like oh like painted the piece overall there's a really thing to kind of like give that real shiny polished feel so like you're definitely right in there but I yeah so like you can definitely tell lights hitting and like reflecting off you know yeah yeah no, that's kind of what i meant it's... like if you if you look at the the um the gem on fluttershy's shoulder mm-hmm. or like if you look at pony yeah, eyes in general right yeah that specular highlight yeah whereas the armor doesn't really have that yeah like I, I'd, I'd call it more of a more of a matte finish rather than a a glossy like you get with um some, with photo with actual photos printed out glossy and matte the, the matte ones do reflect light so they do have that shiny bit like you like you see in the armor but glossy would be more like what you see on the on the lances that they're carrying where it's where it's a bright speck of light whereas with matte it's more spread out and, and um unfocused scattered yeah. it still feels to me that it's a little bit like the medium rather than the depiction yeah, yeah. i agree could be because there's still the there's still that the bright brights and the dark darks and, and you know I think it, it's it's much easier to look at it as being shiny when you look at rainbow dashes because the the messiness of the brush strokes don't come out in that one as much whereas when mm-hmm. you look at flutter size one it's much easier to see kind of the intermediate steps um, and so it, it gives it a lot more uh, of a segmented feel. Like in, in the in the whole art process, it looks very segmented. It goes from dark, and then there's the brushes for the medium, there's the brushes for the light, and then there's the brushes for the bright. You know, whereas on Rainbow Dashes, it's kind of it it kind of fits together better. I mean, there is it definite brush strokes yeah. in places like the leg, for for example, on Rainbow Dash, but I don't I don't see as many brush strokes on Rainbow Dash's armor as I do on Fluttershy's. You know. Yeah. Definitely. 
I love the expressions on this piece. <laughs> Poor Fluttershy. <laughs> Uh, I'm not really feeling it. As a person who like usually looks at expressions, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know why. I just I'm not feeling the emotions in this piece for some reason. Well, the the, the eyes and the the faces are sort of dulled out. They're not the focus of, or they don't, they don't draw your attention as much as they do in a lot of other stuff because the eyes aren't bright out there. I mean, you, you can hardly yeah, aren't mm-hmm. highlighted. You can hardly tell that Rainbow Dash has irises. Yeah, no, that's getting... a very good point. Yeah. The same with Fluttershy, like her whole eye is kind of that muted green color, and then it's just a slightly more brighter color on her iris. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, definitely in Mewball style, she doesn't really have the eyes pop with vivid color. Maybe she does. I'd have to look at some of her other work, but... Um, yeah, like, the eyes definitely aren't, like, the focus. Um, my eye d- kind of does travel to Flutter Guy and Rainbow Dash, but not a lot of <laughs> tricks. <laughs> wow, that... Yeah. Nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, Flutter guy. Flutter shy. Flutter guy, you look really good in armor. Shy. <laughs> yep. Flutter shy and Rainbow Dash. Um, just because the light's hitting uh, Flutter shy and then uh, the top of Rainbow Dash's head, so it does bring a bit of attraction there. But yeah, just like you said, I don't find myself looking at their eyes, but I see their expressions, like how their eyes are, like Rain or Flutter shy's, how they're tilted <laughs> down, and then uh, I want to say Rainbow Plasma so bad. Um, <laughs> Rainbow Dash's eyes, how they're like tilted angrily and. Uh, their mouths too. You can definitely tell them like their expressions in their mouth. I think the yeah. funny thing is that actually kind of matches. If we were both jousting, this would be about. Yeah, it'd, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be about the same. Do you guys, do you guys <laughs> find yourself okay. having trouble saying "cutie mark crusaders" now? Oh yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> all the time. I, I cannot <laughs> say it. Um, but yeah, so so I think this is, and in armor in general, is an interesting thing to talk about just from a, a composition sense, because ponies are so simple that our eyes get drawn to you know the hair and the the you know, the faces especially, because there's there's really not that much else when it comes to the bodies, you know? It's all one flat color for the most part. Um, and so when you add something in that is detailed on the body, such as the armor, um, it does tend to break away from that, and the piece becomes more about the armor than the ponies that are in them, you know? There's still obviously the hair that stands out a bit, but you can see how in a piece like this, the attention gets divided a lot more than when the ponies aren't wearing the armor. Well, I think, especially like with with this piece, I think the scenario is, is more suited towards drawing your attention than the individual characters. Yeah. You know, right. Like that. Right. Again, yeah. it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's something to be aware of. And as long as you plan for that, like if your piece is planned around that, and, and a lot of these pieces that we're going to be showing uh, soon are planned around that. And so that's what makes them, you know, well, because they were... They were planned to do that, and then uh, it worked out nicely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. An inch, so. I got it. Sorry. Uh-huh. I have some uh, one one point. I was going to say something interesting uh, Mabel does is uh, I believe she paints in her colors first before she nails her um, fun word values. So she doesn't get like uh-huh. her lights and darks. She actually throws out some of her base colors and what she wants them to look like and then starts to work like brights and darks into that. Um, she had like a step-by-step process of a uh, Rainbow Dash and um, Spitfire piece from the uh, Wonder Bolts episode, whatever that was called. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It's kind of mm-hmm. interesting to see how she comes with her final work and it still looks like really, really good and paint and everything like the painted feel. Mm-hmm. Also, I love their hair. Last little note. Yes. <laughs> oh, I can't stop talking. Um, <laughs> one more. One more. Go on. Me, uh, my last one is again her painted medium and her style is really cool and you can tell that and. Again, how we mentioned the armor, and then I don't know if we mentioned like the cross hatching in Fluttershy's ear, like yeah. that's very visual and like blatant. And then she has like outlines on certain things, so her paint strokes are very, very um transparent and loose in a lot of things, especially the ear armor, and a lot of other areas. Yeah, anyway, we talked about yeah. last bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you wanted cool. to bring up something before we moved on to the next piece. Uh, a couple of um, sculptures that you wanted to bring up? Yes. So, uh, Just as an art show, we tend to... Well, we, as a podcast art show, we tend to focus on, like, digital art and uh, paintings and, and vectors and stuff like that more so than, like, traditional art. Um, but I wanted to bring these up, and I guess... I don't know who found the, the other one. Um, but there's a Fluttershy jousting figurine and a Rainbow Dash jousting figurine. Um, that were commissions done by 
I'm I pretty sure Nazi Goring is someone. Nazi Goring, Goring, yeah. Yeah. Um, She's done one. Um, no, and... they're both. They're both Nazi Goring. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they're pretty fantastic. <laughs> um, and I thought they just fit our theme pretty well. Cause yeah, it's it reminded you after that first jousting piece that there were these out there, and um, we've gotten a couple of comments just during this last week saying either you know it's too bad that you guys don't do more traditional art, and like oh man, I wish you do more traditional art. It's like we do, it's just harder to harder to spend a long time yeah talking about it. You know, the thing is, is like we mostly use DA as a medium for finding the art. So if if people are creating these these awesome um, you know, works in physical medium and not posting it to DA, it's kind of hard to find it then for us. So yeah, if you're, if you're creating sculptures or doing anything like that, um, definitely post pictures of it. Cause I know we love to see it and I know other people love to see it as well. Yeah. We don't think it's any less, um, you know, artistic. It's just, it do doesn't happen to fit our show a lot, but I mean, traditional things like pencil crayon drawing markers yeah, even sketches in pencil all that kind of stuff like that fits our show it's not that we aren't featuring it just we don't see a lot of it out there so if that's more prevalent then we'll pick it but we just don't see a lot of it out there yeah. it's not, it's well, not that sometimes we're... it's like the really good ones we do see just don't match our theme like there's a lot of cool traditional pieces that i'd love to feature they're just not like matching themes that are coming up yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. okay so yeah, just thought those were pretty cool. So our next piece is called Nightmare by Jazz One R U S or Jazz Russ. One Russ. Jazz yeah. Russ. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I that's some language, probably Russian. I, I think it's yeah, Russian. It's Russian. Yeah. Yeah. If, if it's some sort of strange symbols, I just assume it's Russian. <laughs> just my rule. Um, um, yeah, that's does, Russian. Does Ukrainian use the same letters? I don't. I don't look the page. I'm not like. sure. Um, well, how about we go... Because I know Russian and Ukrainian are two Are you going to yeah, Google Translate it? <laughs> no, I s just clicked her main demon our profile and it said, Mail Russia. Uh, okay, there you so go. Russia. Uh. Uh, his. <laughs> Anyways, um, when Flutter Guy, you came up and you said we should do something on armor, mm -hmm. um, this is the first thing that popped into my head. And it's something that I have kind of wanted to feature. And... It, and Ever since we did that Nightmare Moon episode, like the day after we did it, I found this piece, I believe. And it was just, or not the day after, but like, anyways, I saw this piece come up whenever after the Nightmare Moon one. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe we didn't get to feature this one because yeah. I really, I really enjoy it. And I think it's got a lot of cool artistic things to it. So luckily, um, you brought up the armor thing and this kind of fits in perfectly because it's got quite intricate armor to it. Um... Yeah, actually, so, I think I think that was part of the the reason that because you you brought up this piece like right after the, our Nightmare Moon episode, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. We should totally do an armor theme. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, I, I've I've got a lot of stuff to talk about it, so I don't want to like steal it away from you guys. So I'll, I'll like I'll just hold I'll back. let you, I'll let you go before me though. So we'll let the other two go because I have stuff to write too. So <laughs> okay. Pinky Dash, you go first. No, you, 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 <laughs> no, go, no, you go first. Say. Oh, for the love of... <laughs> All right, fine, I'll Rock, go. Rock, paper, scissors for it. <laughs> just, just go, just someone, God. All right, what I find really interesting about this piece is that it is literally all about Luna or Nightmare Moon. Um, the background is very not detailed. It's You can definitely see the brush strokes. Um, you know, it's the ground a little less so. Um, like you, you see some cracks and stuff, but it, compared to the amount of detail put into Nightmare Moon, it's it's you know. This... Is it Nightmare Moon or is it like a nightmare figure cult? Because it really looks like a cult to me. No, uh, it's... no, but the hair is the definitely... cutie mark is kind of a giveaway. Yeah, the cutie mark. <laughs> but it is looks Luna. like a cult, though, doesn't it? It's, well, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different artistic style. You have to remember that alicorns yeah. do look have that elongated, uh, more blunt snout. Yeah, it has eyelashes, so I'm wrong. It just looks like a cult muzzle, but um, it's still like... Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's got she's, a, she's an alicorn. She does that. Yeah. Ponies, how do they work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's definitely not. It's definitely Nightmare Moon. It's just a, okay. definitely a different mm -hmm. style to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, sorry, continue. I also love the way that uh, the artist did the wings on this piece. 
because they're all basically individual feathers and Super they're cool. they're massive feathers too they're like torn yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and looks like swing on league of legends like i mean what? <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> <Dear God. laughs> um, yeah no it's 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 the artist in general did a really cool interpretation here uh one thing that i wanted to bring up that we saw a couple of different things before but not quite as clearly as here was the the use of kind of um I'm going to use the word portals here um, just just to de- describe kind of what the hair is doing because the hair is kind of acting as like a window into another world because that yeah. that that is an impossible it's it's an impossible 3D space you can't have this background that we've got this creepy background and like a window through the hair into you know outside I like the term a window to another where yeah it's 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 definitely it's definitely um, a cool kind of uh, thing that you can only really do with digital art um, where you kind of insert another background into there and, and use the use the empty space of the main for something, you know? Because other other than that background, if you took that kind of moon and the other background out, it would just be kind of like a purple mist. And while that is what Luna's hair usually looks like, it's interesting to fill that void with something, you know? Yeah, mm, I also yeah, it kind of like gives that. it some depth and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still a little translucent too. Like you can see the wing armor, but it's yeah. like it's still like covered. So like you can see through the hair, but it's still that window. So it's like the hair is still like again made of the night. Yeah, and it also gives a good focal point in the fact that the artist obviously wanted the moon to be featured somewhere in this piece, but when making the environment, couldn't find a place to fit it in, and so having that kind of window for the moon it's almost like the moon is caught within her hair you know like the moon is a part of her and it very much is you know Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also kind of it also helps bring it into the piece and make it feel makes it feel like it's a feature of uh the piece as well and that the lighting looks like it's coming from the direction of the moon like casting the shadow and that light on the ground um so like it it's kind of it's kind of cool in how that it's a feature and it's still like a window into another um plain because it's different than um everything that's the background that mist everywhere um but it's also like causing the light source or the light source looks that it's coming from the area so yeah, it even causes that. some mm-hmm. interesting features yeah i didn't even notice that that's cool yeah it's it's a it's a strange interpretation because like you said it does look a little bit culty um you know the the eyes are interesting in that i don't recognize that eye color as being the natural it's... eye color it's a little greener than the yeah. moon is normally are, but yeah. It almost looks like to me because it's interesting because Nightmare Nightmare Moon had similar hair. Was it the same hair as? Did Nightmare Moon have the same hair as like season two Luna? No, it was. It was, no, it, it was it like was this. Some. It was like super wispy, like crazy yeah. yeah. celestial, like um, and it didn't whatnot. really have a formed shape. It's just there's there's a different there's a definite difference in body shape between Luna and Nightmare Moon. And so it's really interesting because it looks like there's, it's almost like this is a mix between the two, like a halfway state or something like that. And I don't know why, but I caught from this piece almost as if it was like an inner fight between Nightmare Moon and Luna. Like this was during her transformation into Nightmare Moon and she was fighting against it or something. You I don't just want to see my feeling. final form. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. I yeah, that. that, yeah. Armor school too. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna bring up that like the armor in this piece actually makes sense, like in terms of placement, because um, if you're a Pegasus or an Alicorn in this case, like you'd want your the front of your wings protected as you're flying. Um, and yeah, it's got horn for, protection too. Yeah. So. Um, mm. And it's it's very gemmed out. Yeah. <laughs> so flashy. So <laughs> but it's, it's all the bling. It's it is a really bling. cool style because like <laughs> to me the reason why i thought it was a male figure is like since the armor is so like there and powerful it just feels masculine to me and then that pointed nose again kind of feels masculine but now that i think of it um alicorns in the show do have that po- po- pointed nose oh absolutely so it's like yeah yeah so like celestia has that luna has that so like now this is in 3d it just kind of like threw me off but you can definitely tell the eyelashes are there now that i see the eyelashes like i i get that more um feminine feel and like the art does, or the armor does have now. Like I'm looking at it and dissecting it. Like all the little points kind of do feel delicate. So, eh, I don't know. It's but it's still like it's a very powerful piece, which is kind of how I got that masculinity from it. 
but you can have powerful female characters. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, um, <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I, I thought this piece was really cool because it also brought up some interesting um, uh, points that I uh, wanted to mention about it in that it feels really monochromatic to me. It feels really like analogous in that the background kind of starts to blend into the stuff that's the focus, but it's still desaturated and way less um, detailed to where it does fall back. Um, but it, it it was kind of caused caused an interesting feature in that it's still really similar to um, some features in Luna, kind of like her body fill, and I had a hard time like separating those planes because there wasn't a huge I keep using this word, but there wasn't a key, uh, huge value shift and like this is the foreground, this is the background. It just kind of felt kind of felt there because normally artists will use like a, they'll darken things to let them like. Uh, kind of sink into the background but where here in the fog it kind of lightens things and you find interesting things in the fog like if you look um, there's things hinted at and if you actually look closer and like make it really big there's little red eyes all over the place in the background um, yeah. that you like only notice if you look really close into it and I mean that really helped me with the whole nightmare theme because it's like this is nightmare moon and this is kind of like her nightmare realm thing or that weird smoke when she was like surrounding Rainbow Dash and doing her trickery and stuff. So mm. it, it it was a really cool feel. Um, just that how the how the fog and smoke kind of messed with how how I'm used to seeing um, depth like depicted. But yeah, I, I know. I, overall, I overall I liked it. I liked the ornamentation, the amount of detail that's in the character. Um, so then it's like I enjoy the lack of detail in the in the nightmare fog rather yeah i mean the artist definitely t uh made some very big decisions when choosing the composition in terms of like uh you know separating foreground and background um and i think they did a fantastic job because your eye really goes right to luna or everything. yeah and that bright that bright light on the ground um really helps you uh find the like like the brightness and it really creates that focus and gives you the sense of like foreground this what's like and um, really grounds um, Nightmare Moon as she's like standing, um, and it really gives that like, uh, what is it, depth of space. But you can tell that like the smoke is kind of surrounding, and that um, the stuff in the background is kind of like lifted up. So there's yeah. there's levels to the smoke still, which is cool. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, we have to move on to our next piece because we're uh, kind of getting over on time. So our next piece is called P O P Stallion Within by surreal uh and i don't know exactly who it's prince of persia it's... Prince, oh, of, prince of persia is a video that game. would make sense and so this yes. is this is uh, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that has to do with prince of persia such as sand and other stuff but before we get into that i wanted to bring up a point that was something that i've talked about a lot but i just want to reiterate it if you're going to make a piece of art and you're picking a canvas size Pick it specific, like you have to think about your canvas size. Some people just blah and make a canvas size. Don't do that. <laughs> you should make a specific canvas size. So our very first piece was approximately 4.3, 4 by 3. You know, that's like a square monitor size. Fine, okay? And I don't want you to get rid of composition just to do this. But if you're going to make a widescreen picture, make it 16 by 9, please. <laughs> this picture, for example, is 1920 by 1080. That is 16 by 9. It's easy to make as as a wallpaper or a background or something. Um, other pieces, such as the last one, were like five pixels off of it. What's the point? <laughs> What's the nah, point in making it five you pixels can off? Drop of it? it. I know, yeah, you but can. it's still black it's still, stars. Yeah, <laughs> it's, black it's stars. Just, <laughs> still, yeah. There's still something to be said about the fact that if you're gonna make it a wide piece, like noticeably wider than it is tall, then just make it 16 by 9. It's the standard nowadays. Do it. <laughs> do it, Phillies. Do it. <laughs> my laptop isn't 16 by 9, but my monitor is. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. And um, yeah, our, our last piece that we'll get to in a minute isn't quite 16 by 9. It's close, though. So it's just like, why? Why? <laughs> no. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> uh... Anyways, yeah. No, this piece is cool, though. Yeah. I like um... it. It's pretty. <laughs> Once again, I love the way that the wings are depicted. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I I like really detailed wings. Me too. Um, as I've They're expressed so previously. Yeah. Yeah. Because like if because if, if you're a Pegasus, you've got these wings, 
which nobody else has, so you need to focus on those. I love it. <laughs> In other words, I am full of my wings. <laughs> <laughs> now we can trust them, bro. Brah. 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 Okay, so obviously because none of Bay you life. know what Prince of Persia is, apparently. Uh, oh, Prince I, I know. I've what never it is. played. I just, I just... Okay. Uh, <laughs> Prince of Persia is a video is a game book? in which it's set in... Per I actually well, haven't played it either. There's a but... series of video games. Yes, it's a series of video games. It has to yeah. do with the sands of time, moving time backwards and forwards, and and it's got all of these cool uh, gameplay elements, and, and, and sand <laughs> is a realized. huge feature on it. Mm -hmm. um, I've totally seen the movie. <laughs> yeah. There's a movie, too. It's, 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 it's okay. Disney, um, yeah. The movie was pretty good, actually. It's okay. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> is it set yeah, in Russia? So Oh, no, no, it's not no. set in Russia. Persia. <laughs> the Middle East. Yeah, you're right. The <laughs> Prince of Persia <laughs> was definitely set in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's the thing. <laughs> well, you, you were, you were, you were going to say before it's somewhere that it was, in, it's, it's somewhere somewhere in set Canada. In Persia, it's just like, so. don't worry about it. Can I, yeah. can I talk about the sand, please? Yes. Please, feel free. Sand is, sand is cool because um, in this piece, it obviously was a huge part of the games and the movie, I guess. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was really cool how this artist decided to include that um, in kind of a menacing form. The ground is sand, but it's also used in these kind of wispy forms that are pointing inwards toward the character. Obviously, there's the looming figure over his back, and it just generally gives a menacing feel um, in the facial expression, in the environment, and it, and it definitely conveys a certain emotional state. Um, I don't know enough about Prince of Persia to be able to say this pinpoints a part in the game, but I would not be surprised if this did um, mirror something from the game. Yeah, but, like the yeah. dude who, like, is he a villain? Is he the boss? Who no, knows? no, this 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 guy, I believe they were basing it off the main <clears throat> character. Well, the dude in the focus of the main character, I'm talking yeah. about the crazy dude over him. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, See, like, uh, I don't know en enough about it. For all I know, that could either be the villain or that could be something to do with the Sands of Time. Again, I don't know enough about it to really go into detail, and I don't want to embarrass myself by attempting to think that I know it. <laughs> well, we so. can only suspect by artistic speculation. I can only <laughs> Wikipedia and YouTube Let's Plays. Uh -huh. Nope, screw <laughs> research. Let's just talk about what talk this about the art, art makes us feels. Mm-hmm. I think, it, I think it's a good point to bring up the fact that we don't know anything about Prince of Persia, but we still think that this art piece is spectacular, and it yes. stands on its own yeah. um, without knowing the reference to it. Artistically, mm -hmm. yes. that thing behind him comes off as very ominous and very evil, especially how it's depicted in black and has, like, wispy, evil -y things coming off of him. And it's yeah. pointy. Um, he has a very, and, like, how he's, yeah, pointy especially, and how he's kind of coming out and grasping that uh, kind of, grasping over the character, looming over him, like, powering over him. There's a lot of things that, like, hint towards power and towards evilness and maliciousness um, in how he's depicted, his color, and, like Pinky Dash mentioned, it's another really good point, he's pointy. Pointy, evil, thorny um, are all, like, real evilish things. He's like, like I said in, I think it was last week, pointy equals evil and smooth, round, curvy equals good. So you got the pony in the front who doesn't have any of the pointy features like the big shadowy character does. I mean, all the only pointy sort of stuff is his hair, which isn't really, um, yeah, it, it, it's, 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 kind of, it's picky, not, not part of it. It's all sort of his have... in. But if you look at his mm -hmm, wings yeah. and if you look at his armor and stuff, it's all smooth and round. Whereas you look at the character in the background, it's all pointy and sharp and black and it just yeah, well, smells of evil. <laughs> yeah, so, but sometimes it's not always like little details. It's like. I mean, like, pointy claws and things and, like, horns, you know? And it's like, yeah, there's definitely nothing on the character that really, like, reeks of pointiness. But it's like, yeah, clothing is real important and then how they're depicted is real important. What a, so. what a great phrase. Reeks of pointiness. <laughs> <laughs> so so have we determined that this is a scratch and sniff picture then? <laughs> Man, what would that, what would that Kids smell don't like? Sand? Say home. <laughs> this I smells of sand and any... evil. I've never, I haven't seen a scratch and sniff in years. This yeah. Looks yeah, why don't we have any of those in the pony community? <laughs> why isn't... I thought computers are supposed to have smell vision by now. My, yeah, pe my Pinkie right? Pie smells like candy. That's true. <laughs> I bet she smells like cupcakes, actually. No, it no, does she actually, actually smell like, like candy. candy. No. You have, yeah. like, oh, a really. scented thing. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. There's, actually, yeah, a, like the there's actually a table in the convention where she's, like, selling pony smells. The coolest <laughs> one was Rainbow Dash that smells like rain and rainbow sherbet. Okay, 
Can, may I raise my hand and say I'm a little bit weirded out by that? <laughs> I mean, in, in, in practice, in practice, I'm sure it's fine. But just advertise, like, who sat down and was like, you know what I should do? I should make things that smell like the ponies. <laughs> I should sell pony smells. Well, well she's, does she sell like little little baggies with air in them? Or are they just, like reed diffusers? They, they were, I think they were body lotions and she had uh, soaps too. Uh, okay, see, now that that's seems cool. a little bit better because like the They're way that... Like, Things that smell like pony, like come sniff this. No, they had it. They had a use. Like they were soaps and body lotions. I'm pretty okay. Sure. Well, that's a little. That's a little bit like it would remind you maybe uh, that. Okay, that's. I mean, it's still. It's still on the edge of weird for me. But I feel like as long as it has a use, that's cool. It was also funny because I got really mixed vibes because she was also selling um like canteens, like the little like drinking things, flasks. She was selling flasks with like the cutie marks on them, like painted on them. And I was like, flasks to body lotion. Interesting, yes. Interesting. interesting. <laughs> I'm going to make my hair smell like Applejack. <laughs> I'll take your gotta... finest flask and your finest lotion. I love getting drunk and smearing lotion on myself. Burn, can you buy me Rainbow Dash shampoo? I, yes, yes, I can. Wash yourself with the essence you, of Pinkie Pie. I'm gonna go buy you some of that lotion and just like scrub. Yeah, see, this is that. weird. Yeah, exactly. This is most definitely weird. Fluttershy, We're getting Fluttershy, Fluttershy extract. <laughs> extract, extract of Prince Fluttershy. of Persia smells. Anyway, it's great. I bet this piece would smell awful. Stop. Stop. Just this stop piece it would smell good. foreboding. Whatever that smells like. I'm pretty sure we've established that it smells pointy, but that's besides the point. Um, it smells pointy. Anyhow, anyway, um, cool stuff about this piece. I love the lighting. On, yes. Yeah, from the two, I believe that's the Sands of Time. Because on the ground. no, in the in his claws, like that he's oh, yeah. levitating up. And yeah, that's normal sand on the ground. Got it. Yep. Yeah. Totally, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, it's, it's reflecting on the the wings and the armor and on the claws of the big thing behind it, and it's just yeah, it's really cool. Well, they're also condensed balls of light too, right? They're not like giant bright suns and yeah. so they don't affect the overall lighting of the piece but they do give off a little bit of a glow which i think is really important because light sources are more than just one solitary thing you can have bright light sources you can have dim far reaching short reaching all these different things you know and uh and it does a really good job of saying that these are just things that are glowing they're not they are light sources, but they're not light sources in the traditional sense that you would think of them, you know? They aren't blinding you. Yeah, they aren't like <laughs> suns. <laughs> it's just glowy, powerful uh, sand. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if it smells glowy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> anyway, no, I like um, how the villain character is depicted. Um, Because we always say the little thing, it's like, don't use black in your art pieces because he creates voids. And it's like, it totally uses that here. He's very voidish. He's very shadowish. Um, and like it makes him recede so it's like he's depicted in black and that black really helps him not only give him that evil ominous feel but also helps him give him that shadow um, luminous feel um, and especially in the sand uh, on the sides the stuff that is black you can kind of feel like it's more receded and you know it doesn't have light hitting on it and I love what the white in the background has done to make the evil character pop out and also kind of create like an overall light source um, this like <laughs> the use of value in this piece from like pure <laughs> white to pure black is really cool see um, if, I if like you hadn't, lot, honestly if you hadn't mentioned value i was just about to because <laughs> no, i got i gotta it, bring it up i don't want to let my hands down <laughs> you know i love, I love that bird that I, little giggled beforehand so i knew exactly what was coming so, <laughs> so the people every person who i've met who's recognized me here has had like made some kind of stupid fan crap <laughs> I, asked, I asked late customer to buy me or i <clears throat> i paid late customer for a commission i bought a sketch commission from him and uh i was like i'd love if you would sketch like moc or something that'd be awesome and he's like yeah sure he sketched me in a bloody cage <laughs> he sketched me yes. in a cage and i'm reaching outside of the cage trying to like pick the lock and i'm just like this is awesome <laughs> new best friend fantastic God, new best friend Oh it's my awesome. God. And then um, Mustang has made some value cracks too. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's good. That's good uh, stuff though. We love I love the roller coaster of emotion that had to do with value. That's great. Okay, okay. so I'm going to move right, on to this piece so because you won't for some I'll reason. I'll move on to the next piece. I don't want to move on to the next piece. No, I want to talk about how no, rugged this guy is. No, Look how sexy he is. Actually, Whoa, okay, yeah. I'm cutting one, that. One, <laughs> one, one more thing about this he piece. He is so attractive. Oh, damn it. I Flutter guy. love how the hooves are depicted. Cool. Hooves are cool, and also they're quite fuzzy. I agree. Is he not rugged? 
Is he's he very not rugged. He's very. He like. He looks Stop like you kind of. I have to cut. I have to cut <laughs> in and around this. Why do you have it. to cut this? You're a jerk. <laughs> he is a very rugged, attractive pony. So, so I, I believe that somehow we've lost everyone's sense and sensibility. So we're gonna move on to the next piece because we are running low on time. And when I say that, I don't mean we're running low on time as in we're reaching an hour. I mean we're running low on time on my estimated calculations. And my calculations say that the next piece is called Heroes of Equestria by Fruit Blood Milka Shake. Milka Shake! Milka Shake! Dread Spackery! Dread Spackery! You never knew that milk, milk, that you thought it was Fruit Blood Milkshake, but there's actually an A in there. Yeah. It's Milka Shake. Milka Shake! That's not No, but um, this is another piece that we uh, I've been wanting to put in for a while now, but just haven't found kind of the right theme in. So <clears throat> they're totally armor in this piece, right? Uh, <laughs> there is. They're all wearing armor. There no, are. It, it is very true. Well, except for Twilight, she looks like she has some sort of dinky little cape. Yeah, she's she has a, she's she has a armor star. hoops. Hoof armor. Oh, that's true. Hoops. She does have hoof armor. Yeah. Um, no, those are but yeah, shoes. So this 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 piece is just spectacular. They're armor me. shoes. You should try. Um, I love the detail in the piece and the fact that there's detail in places like the wings, even though there isn't a lot of specific detail, you know? In the wings, it, it it's not quite as quote unquote, you know, fully explored and detailed as some of the other wings that we saw, you know, feather by feather, but it still gives a very loose and feathery feel to it. Which They're is really painted. Cool. They're my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It's like <laughs> they've got they're super painted. It's super like loose and like you can see all the paint brush and strokes and stuff. So it's like yeah. everything else is so ultra realistic and then he's like painty. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, and the the paintiness gives it this fuzzy feel. Like you feel like a Philomena's wings. There's definitely a fuzz to him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially the outside. What what was that? Was it the subsurface scattering? Subsurface yeah. scattering. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, now you're making fun of uh, Spirito. Um, I'm making fun of Spirit. <laughs> I'm making I'm fun of Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Um, so if you look, if you look, the arms and the wings uh, of Philomena, um, it has around the edges has you know like the either I guess it's the feathers peeking around there have a lot of subsurface scattering. Um, which, if in case you don't know what that is, you should probably go back and uh, listen to our colors episode because we talked about that a little bit. Because it was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yep. Super, it's awesome. And you mentioned that it was super realistic, which I thought was really interesting because I definitely got that vibe. And I mean, even though it does, it doesn't look real to me. It still has a very detailed, you know, vibe to it. Almost yeah. as if like there's the very clearly fake ponies with very real attributes to them, such as mm -hmm. the hair or most notably the armor which is incredibly detailed to a point that it looks like someone photoshopped on a piece of armor onto this piece you know I should really zoom in on this thing <laughs> yeah no, I, Lord. uh i mean to me it kind of looks like uh the ponies are kind of disjuncted from yeah or i don't from... think that's a word <laughs> <laughs> it took, that took what do you mean by disjuncted they look like, like they cut like... they cut and pasted there yeah, it's it's like they're they're not um really fitting in completely with the background mm -hmm. or with the armor and stuff. Um, but it kind of gives it this this unique feel to the piece where it's yeah. like, um, especially especially Celestia. Uh, to me, it looks like Celestia's sort of um her right, so our left hand side of her along her hair, just mm -hmm. makes it makes it look a bit not real, whereas everything else sort of looks kind of real. Actually, I mean, I think this piece could possibly fit under a surrealist category just because yeah. of the fish, like the fisheye lens Very, and the yeah. the way that, that the um the, all the characters are kind of pasted on. It There's literally like. like four different styles in this piece, which is super interesting to me because in 99% of other works, if they try to mix four different art styles, it ends up just being a mess. But I think that either the artist is just experienced in this kind of thing or it, it's something that's very thought out because I think the sky and the ground are two different background styles and mm -hmm. then I think that the the characters and their props are again two different styles and so it creates this really interesting four like faceted art piece that in a normal situation would just be a mess but because it's all thought out and each style is separated into its own categories within the piece, 
that it actually works together really nicely. And I can't really describe why it works so nicely, but I don't know, it just... I feel the reason why it works together... I'm not interrupting you, am I? No, no, go ahead. Okay, I feel like the... Um... The reason why everything fits together and flows so nicely together in this piece is like one, like yes, the artist is super experienced in using like his style and details and picks and things. But for me, the, what ties everything together is really the composition. It's that dynamic view and perspective and it's how everything is warped and rounded and everything comes up to um, or bends in towards the um, towards uh, Celestia's armor as like her is the focus. Like those three characters are the focus. They're the central part of this piece. Everything else is emanating out from them. There's this real like situated outward motion. Um, everything in the composition of this piece brings you outward. It helps create that like feeling of power, that feeling of spread out. I mean, especially in Philomena's wings and um, Celestia's wings, like it's that big overarching looming power feel. Like the wings in this piece take up like the majority of space in the composition. So that, that real bending, warping, bending upwards and round composi composition really helps bring everything together, tie everything, give it kind of meaning, give it feeling. And it's really unique and it's really cool because it's like, obviously there's not a lot of artists that like to play with this kind of um, composition, especially something rounded and bent like this. And it's the only real piece in the pony community that I know off the top of my head, um, except for like maybe Citra's work that really plays with that like dynamic um, perspective and like bending outwards. Um, so as far as like composition goes, this piece is really cool and unique. Um, and yeah, yeah like, yeah, that, that for me is like really what ties it together is how everything is placed and how it, um, portrays outwards. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's I, not I think... quite a fisheye lens though, because no, a fisheye lens close. bends the environment as well. It gives the illusion of a fisheye lens because of the sky. Yeah. But in, in reality, if you look, there's both the uh, tree off to the right and there's a little bit of a rock in the bottom left-hand corner. Yeah. But those would be bent much more in a fisheye lens. And also a fisheye lens affects subjects yeah. as well, like, not just a background. The composition of things is definitely, it's like, it's bent and it's rounded. Um, and it's like, it's centralized towards what it wants to be the focus. And mm -hmm. obviously emulating like outwards from Celestia or whatever. Um, and then that tree in the in the foreground, it, like it helps separate foreground from background. Like that tree is up in your face, darker. And as things um, travel back uh, farther, there's atmosphere perspective. They get lighter. So the thing that is the ultimate most far away is like pure white. That sky in the background there. Yeah. So mm. the background also helps to give you that depiction you know, of depth. By you the way, if you sorry, guy. Oh, I was just gonna say, if you look at the tree, uh, plasma you'll like this. Um, his signature is there. Yeah, mm -hmm. in the tree. Yeah, you have to look really closely to find it, though. I would it's honestly like, have no issue if that signature was bigger. <laughs> because I feel like it's a very clever usage, and if the artist is yeah. perfectly okay with that, then go ahead. But, I mean, even that, that is so tiny that... You know, I, I would see have it in flames like it was burnt in there. That'd yeah, cool. yeah, like yeah. a little bit more would would it that would have been perfectly fine with me. Um, as long as, you know, a signature doesn't really affect me unless it you know, it only affects me if it interferes with the piece. And I think that oh. something on the tree wouldn't interfere with the piece. An another thing that helps give you that sense of power and, um, and like how they're kind of like standing over you is that the view of this piece, that's another good thing to look at when you're considering composition is view, like mm. how the viewer is looking at it. Um, we're at almost ground level. If you look at the ground, it's very flat and you can't see a lot of it because we're so low down and we're actually physically looking up at Celestia and looking up at Philomena and looking up at the sky. And that sense of looking up at something that gives you that sense of whatever you're looking at is more powerful than you. Like the easy examples, like you're an adult when you're young and you look up to your parents or if you look up to a king who sits on a throne, it's like that power of, of like of being over you, something overarching. It also helps give that sense of like uber powerfulness of flaming Philomena and Celestia. Yeah. Uber powerfulness. <laughs> nice. Thank <laughs> uh, you, you wanted to say something? I, I just wanted to point out the lighting that is used in this is pretty amazing. You've got that lens flare just to the left, our left of Luna there. Um, mm -hmm. So you, you can sort of tell that he's tried to make it look like it's a photograph and I think he's done a fairly good job at that. Um, he or she, she, he, he, he. Um, and also the, the lighting from, I guess that's lava in the background, coming from that volcano off to the left. And you can see mm. that up, up mainly on Luna's legs. You can see that coming up from underneath her, lighting her up from underneath. 
just mm. all of, all of it just, just lighting her. everywhere. And then Twilight's yeah. book all over her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. And Celestia's <laughs> legs are on fire. All of it's great. In fact, that the, the uh, it actually really reminds me of um one of uh, quite a lot of Pony Killer X's work as well. Mm. Hmm. I actually thought it was one of his until <laughs> I saw the name. You'll have to look him up on your own spare time. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. how the that's how you do lens flare right though. You make it barely noticeable and super yeah. like distinct because it's like there's always the lens flare joke to where it's like lens flare and just like throw it over everything. <laughs> but it's like yeah. no, that that flare does help. Like it for me, it looks like it's coming from Celestia's mane. Like it's so ridiculously bright and powerful that it's like blinding you and causing that lens flare. But it's like it's super. That's it's lens flare is super subtle though. You know, it's not like it doesn't create a focus. It just creates um a feel. Yeah, well, if you look, like, at Celestia's main level, there's this, like, line. Yeah, that goes across of, Luna. Yeah, which is also kind of part of that lens flare, which... Yeah, it's, that's what made, helps me feel like it's from her main, you know? Yeah. Uh, I love, just one last thing, unless someone else has something to say on this piece, I love how the ground is done with the flowing lava. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of, like, Halo 4. For some reason, it gives me a Morrowind feel. I don't know if you guys ever played Morrowind. Nope. No. Uh, well, Ge- Gears of War with all the uh, stuff flying around. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't get that feel from any of the video games that you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we emotion, associate emotion, things because yeah. we all we. That's a good point to bring in how like culture changes artistic views because we all have different cultures and things we've been raised on. And really I'll give you culture. <laughs> no, no we raise what we do and. I played all the games, and I don't. I don't see where. Maybe you guys are just thinking of a different part of the game than I am. But our interactions Probably. and experiences are what define us. So we feel different things. Oh, for getting, getting all deep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're, you're <laughs> uh, time for some silly questions. It's time for some questions. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I like Finamina. Mm, cool. Yeah. Well, I think we've only got sort of five-ish minutes. I'll be quick. Um, okay, so which background character should get his or her own episode sent in by Scribble Wordsworth? Worth words. Is that like <laughs> Scribble Worth words? words. <laughs> Scribble Worth words. Nice yes. name. I get it. That's Scribble good, Worth words. Uh, <laughs> okay. I like your name. Um, whew, geez, mm-hmm. that's a tough question. Cloud I mean, is it like. <laughs> is it like what background <laughs> character we like that should get its own episode or what we feel actually should? What should? Because I would love to see a Lyra episode. Oh my god! Stop I stealing my answers, Burn. Do you know Lyra's <laughs> yeah. my favorite background pony? I would also go for Lyra. But I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> but it has to be focused around like I love lands and people. Anthropology. No, okay, I I completely disagree with you there. Yeah, no, okay. I don't I don't like the whole Lyra human thing. So, what but I like a... Lyra as a character, and I think it'd be interesting to explore the character in general. But I don't know. I guess I'm influenced by fandom. So I mean, whatever. I just love Cloud Chaser. Yep, that's it, pretty in the show, I'm I'm gonna say Lyra too, but like in the show, she's always so jumpy and peppy because yeah. the animators or the storyboarders or whoever, like, put put her in to kind of, you know, yeah. spice up the scene like, a bit. What what was it? It was the apple cider or the super cider squeezy whatever the hell super yeah. speedy cider squeezy six thousand that thing super yeah. well titled episode six thousand three thousand six thousand three thousand um that where she like where she like jumps up. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, she right? just the the animators have given her such personality. I mean, the personality that the the fandom has um kind of continued didn't didn't come out of nowhere. It, it came from a lot of the background work, and I think Lyra is probably the the most person. She's got the be- most personality from a background pony, as far as um, like a depicted background character. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. I would argue that more than Derpy because Derpy's just there, you know, and I think that's much more of a fan thing. There's still, um, yeah, Derby's definitely a fan thing, and they're not going to touch that with an any foot pole because yeah. of <laughs> like the connotations. But yeah, um, any like, what about like the kid characters? You know, like something that you can tie into the CSC. So like, there's there's Pip. Oh my God, there's Twist. But other other than that, I like um, Twist. I don't like <laughs> any of the kid characters. <laughs> I saw a girl in Twist cosplay. It was really good, and she was talking with a lisp everywhere. But anyway, um, <laughs> da 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 da. Oh, like Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara. It could be an episode, uh, like kind of featured or themed around them, and maybe give them some backstory about like oh, why they're they're I so don't. like 
they're always depicted as villain characters or some kind of development there like i don't want to see i would much rather have an episode the only kid character that i like besides the cac the cac what am i saying <laughs> <laughs> the only kid characters that i like that aren't the cmc uh i like rumble because he's kind of cute but who the heck is that rumble That's is thunder, thunder lane's, lane's little brother brother and you he's know, a cute the... little adorable Pegasus that appeared for like one episode. Yeah, <laughs> no, I think he's been yeah. in a couple. I know Pip, but he's a tiny little Pegasus. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, if there's a Lyra, Lyra, if there's a Lyra episode, there would have to be. A, it would have to be Lyra and Bumble. Like, yeah, no, it'd like, be cool to see the dynamic. It's too cute. Like they're too cute of a pair. Yeah. I love when she's like mm-hmm. in the background drinking her shake, and then Bonbon walks up, and she gets all happy. <laughs> yeah. Like when I saw the like, oh, that's like, oh. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Props to the animators for giving such personality to those characters. Yeah. Does a Sibsy episode count? Can we have that? <laughs> no, they shut that down too. Jerks. Not... Okay. I would love to see that. Bring it, Ash? I said Cloud Jessa. Yeah, I know, but you're also the questions, so. Next, okay. next question. So we got next question. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay. Burned has now begun to ramble and has eaten the key to his cage. How do you shut him up? <laughs> Sent in by a messy Bobo Boo. It sucks for him because I locked him in there first, so. I mean. Forget um, you. I ate the key to my cage, so you can't physically lock me in here. Well, no, there's it's no, too late. There's nowhere in that conversation that I've already been locked in. Like, uh, But the fact of the matter is people don't know that we actually lock you up 24-7 except for when we do the podcast. And, I mean, <laughs> it was a nightmare to attempt to ship you down to L.A. to get you to EQLA. <laughs> And I mean, really I'm sure, I'm sure, a both late customer, and um, if he's, if he's, oh god, I forgot his name. Uh, who else saw you this weekend? Uh, late customer, mummified mustangs. Yeah, yeah mummified mustangs. So I'm sure both late customer and mummified mustangs, they can both confirm in the chat that you were fully in a cage and they had to carry you around. <laughs> and I mean, the fact of the matter is that we can't let you out, and so you're going to be stuck in that cage until you poop it out. And then none of us are going to deal with that. So if you want out of that cage, you're going to have to deal with your own poop key, okay? I'm so poop unamused key. by this conversation. <laughs> no. Poop key. You, you hate the cage thing. I think we should just give him food or something. Milk and honey? I don't know. Yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, if, I mean, if he stuffs food if in his face, eating, he's going to shut up. He can't talk i hate the cage thing <laughs> everybody hates the cage thing i know which is why i keep bringing it up <laughs> no it's great it's great i love it i love it uh but i'm sorry burned but i mean okay. to, to be fair i would never let that happen because I, I keep a very close track on on burden's cage keys um in fact they're, they're with me right now so i mean they have, a di- they have a different jingle because I moved departments. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get a smaller cage. Yeah, yeah. Hate <laughs> you guys. Love you, Burn. Wait, have I changed the bedding in your cage recently, Burned? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Let it work still so full. That, so that's why it's starting to smell. That's probably why in that piece uh, late customer did. It's probably why in the piece for late customer, uh, late customer did why I'm trying to pick the lock because I ate the key. Uh, yeah. uh, when okay. you get to like somewhere you can upload a picture of that then you totally can we get you like a human sized cage for you to like sit in be you'd nice. be like you'd be like the grumpiest person of all time if we did that <laughs> oh man okay. that'd be great. so we'll do plugs now yep finishing up mm-hmm. okay so we have a DeviantArt page, which is qdrcrusaders.deviantart.com. Uh, go there to check out any stuff that we featured on today's episode, stuff that featured on previous episodes, and stuff that we just couldn't show on today's episode but does still fit the theme. I think there's one or two pretty cool ones in there as well. So go check those out. Uh, we also have an email, which is qdrcrusaders at gmail.com. Um, please send us in any questions you can think of that you want us to ask, um, either about the art or just about us personally. We've got a lot of sort of ask questions, not so much art questions. So you've got art questions, that'd be cool. So send those mm. in. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of our shows draw us personality, but we also do like to talk about art rather than ourselves. So And we like to look at it too. So. Yeah. 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 Usually we want to have like one solid art question and then like two, one or two like more general ones. I didn't really get to that today because we didn't have time, but next week, yeah. Yeah. If, we, if we don't have a guest. Next. Yeah. Yes. Speaking, right. of, I mean, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we have a Facebook page, which is k- facebook.com slash Crusaders. You can go there, give us a like. We'll post on the day of 
an episode airing um basically when it will air and also like about 15 minutes beforehand and we also have a twitter page which is twitter.com slash oh wait no sorry <laughs> at kitty art crusade um and you can go there and we'll provide up to the minute information on the stream stuff like that someone asked recently why our twitter handle is cutie art crusade and i guess i'll just refresh people's memory the reason why it's at cutie art crusade and not at cutie art crusaders is because twitter has a limit on how long the name is and so I'm pretty, long. i think cutie art crusade fits their name length pretty perfectly so that's why yeah, yeah. it works well yeah because mm -hmm. so, i yeah. Of cutie arts. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, due to our current predicament um, with the guests that we were going to have on this week, um, we don't know what we're going to be doing uh, next week. So, unfortunately, we won't be able to give you guys a theme. It should be fine for next week, and we should have a guest for next week. Um, but, unfortunately, if it doesn't come down to that again, then we can't inform you about the theme, uh, even though we really want to. But that's kind of what happens. In order to get special guests, we have to give up some things. So... Uh, if things all go according to plan. Um, we should be able to have a guest on next week. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, and and, and we're we're trying to and and even if we don't get that particular guest, I know Burn, we're we're looking into more things um as we go forward. But man, we're we're reaching fifty pretty fast. Yeah, and fifty just to a year. We, yeah, we're hell. not gonna do any. For the record, we're not gonna do anything special for fifty, but we're gonna try to do something special for fifty-two. Yeah. I was saying fifty because fifty is a round number, but fifty-two is kind of the one because that'll be our year our long. Year. Yeah, you know, you a year anniversary, anniversary. which would be pretty crazy. cool. Do a fan thing. Well, no, it, it coincides with yeah. Everfree Northwest, so maybe we can do like a <sighs> something. Does it? Thing. Does it really? A, a uh -huh. thing. It's just a thing. Just you know, a thing. Just a thing. No, I would never. I would never reveal what that thing might be because that would be stupid. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, um, thank you guys for coming out. Whether or not you are on the live stream or on YouTube, I actually went back this week and read some YouTube comments, and there's some very nice ones. So, thank you. I very hear you're much. a sexy man. <laughs> I hear I am very handsome. Apparently, thank you to all the compliments about how good looking apparently I am. You are a good looking man. I apparently I, I missed those when we put out that episode, and I went back just to see what the comments were like, and it was kind of uh, maybe blush a little bit. So thank you. <laughs> That's right. it, it was good, uh, it was it was very nice. It was a very nice sentiment. Plasma kiss uh, me. Um. So yeah, thank you. Because I don't I don't oh, yeah. give a so uh, yeah. Anyways, I was just trying to say thank you to YouTube because I don't think that I look at it enough. I know Burn does, but I don't. So thank you. And so um, that is it for this episode. Uh, I don't think we have anything else. So you guys know all the deals. We'll hopefully have a guest next week. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for coming out. My name is Rainbow Plasma. Uh, I'm Bruno One. I'm Flutterguy317. And I'm Pinky Dash. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.